These are my thoughts on the numbers from 0 to 100, so please enjoy. I associate 26 with the day after Christmas, aka <laughs> the saddest day of the year. 27 is a perfect cube, so is 8, but that entry got too long. And I like perfect cubes, but not so much as I like perfect squares. I just find them more memorable, and I can cover more of them in the video. 28, double the love of 14. I spent way too much time ranting on 19, and I find numbers like 29 loathsome for the same reasons. So from here on out, I'll be calling them demon numbers. I like 30 well enough. 30 would be more likable if it was divisible by 4, then it would be divisible by 6 consecutive numbers, but it loses out on that, which kind of frustrates me. Of the 12 months of the year, 7 of them have 31 days. I personally think that's just the right amount of time before we had enough of one month and are ready to move on to the next. Also, you gotta appreciate that the fact that Halloween is on October 31st. I associate October with the countdown to Halloween, and since Halloween is on October 31st, after the holiday is over, the month is over. And we can move on to Thanksgiving. I said Thanksgiving. Take down that Christmas tree! 32 is somewhat satisfying, but I'm not over the moon about it. 33 is a groovy twoey. 34 and 35 are okay. My issue with 36 isn't so much number itself, I mean it ticks the square box perfectly. I just don't like the way it's pronounced. 36. 36. Blech. 37 seems perfectly content with just being. 38 is okay, just so long as it isn't split in half. 39 is a demon number. 40 doubles the love of 20. 41 is one of my favorite numbers to pronounce. It sounds so soft and fluid. 41, 41, 41. 42 is tolerable. Okay, I've got a bone to pick with 43. When I was younger, I had 43 colorful blocks. I usually like to sort things into even rows and columns, but what I didn't know at the time was that 43 was a prime number. So every time I tried to set up an arrangement of blocks, there was always one or more blocks remaining, or not enough blocks left to finish a row. I was pretty annoyed about that. But then I found that the block was missing, which meant I could organize them evenly into groups of 4 or 11. That experience definitely made me appreciate 44 more. You know what I like about 45? All of my classes end with the minute hand at 45 minutes. I've got no issues with 46 or 47. 48 is quadruple the love of 12. 49 only barely slides past being considered a demon number by being a perfect square. But it's definitely my least favorite perfect square, so it still gets one devil horn. Woohoo! 50 nifty! When I hear 50, one of the first things that comes to mind is the United States. I love my state, I love this country, and even if there's been some hurdles, in the grand scheme, we got a lot to love and a lot to look forward to. My question to you is, is the video 50% over? Or is there 50% left to go? I'm indifferent about 51, 52, and 53 when they're on their own, but when I'm counting to 100, it feels nice to know that I'm more than halfway through by the time I get to them. I like 54 because there are 54 countries in Africa, and Africa was my favorite continent to learn about in elementary school. 55 is a groovy twoey. 56, 57, 58... Not favorites of mine, but they're nice to have around anyways. 59 is a demon number. Especially when I see it on the clock. Whenever I see an hour followed by a 59, I just want it to move up one minute! Arrgh. 60 fixes the issue that I have with 30 by being divisible by 4, which means that it's divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This only becomes more satisfying to me when I realize that the factors of 60 also include 12 and 20, among others. Now that is great. On the flip side, I hate waking up for school in the morning, which means I am dreading 7am, aka 760, but even so, 60 is by far my favorite tens number for its laundry list of factors. It's honestly kind of baffling that you lose all these factors when you add one more. What I'm saying is, screw you, 61. 62 and 63 are okay, but 64? Oh my god, it's a square, it's a cube, it's a perfect sixth, 64 is a legend! I am way more excited about this than I probably should be, but who cares? 64 is the best! Sorry 65, you just can't compare. I credit 66 for being a groovy twoey, but it takes the pronunciation issue I have with 36 and cranks it up even further. 67 simply puts me at ease. It's just two of my favorite numbers side by side. Kinda like a boy and a girl meeting in high school, then becoming good friends, then a couple, and then a husband and wife that are really happy together. How sweet. 
Much like 23, 68 is surrounded by too many more interesting numbers for me to have any feelings for it. Despite its second digit, 69 is an exception to the demon numbers. It's one of the very few numbers that can be turned 180 degrees and still be 69. Furthermore, if you turn to 90 degrees, you'll find the symbol of my zodiac sign, Cancer. Combine that with what you learned from 21, and you can guess my birth date. There was this VeggieTales music CD where they were playing a compilation of songs from the 70s with the VeggieTales singing over them. And this totally random CD is what clicks in my head whenever I think of 70. 